Hi guys, how are you all? So welcome to the platform of eGurukul and Dr. Bhatia Medical Coaching Institute. I am Dr. Ramya Sri, I teach Obstetrics and Gynecology. So I am doing a small 10 minutes MCQ series where I will be discussing mainly the previous year questions. Because previous year questions are most important. So questions which might not be covered by you all, I thought that I will cover through this 10 minute series. So I am going to discuss some MCQs which are difficult and which we don't discuss much and which were googlies in the previous years. Okay. So in this small video, we will try to cover some of the questions of our previous year questions. Right. So let us see the first question. Pregnant female has cramps in her legs. What suggestion will you give? Dorsiflex with while knee extended. Dorsiflex while knee flexed. So dorsiflex while knee is extended. Yeah, dorsiflex while knee is also flexed. Plantar flexion while knee is extended. Plantar flexion with while knee extended. Plantar flexion with while knee flex. Okay, so yes, many times cramps are very common in the pregnancy. You know, there are two things which are very common and which our patients usually tell in the uh, in the antenatal visits. One is the cramps, they will get the cramps, especially in that uh, calf muscles, may cramps will start. Second thing they tell us is that they are having the pain in the uh, inguinal region and the iliac fossa, that is the round ligament pain. Okay, so there are two things which we commonly see. One is the round ligament pain. See, one is the as the uterus is stretching, as the uterus is stretching, round ligaments are also getting stretched. That will cause the pain in the inguinal and the iliac fossa. So, for round ligament pain, what do you do is? You make the mother lie down supine. So at the level of the hip joint, so there should be flexion. Knees also are flexed. So you have to flex the hip joint and the knees. So that will help her. So when she lies down, when she lies down, so keep her knee, keep her, keep her hip and knee in the flexion. So that will help her in the uh, relieved of round ligament pain. Now let us come to the question. Ki what question they have asked? For that, let us answer. So, what are these leg cramps? So, leg cramps are painful involuntary muscle contractions that typically affect the calf. As I told you, mainly most patients come to me and tell that they are having the pain in the calf. So, typically affecting the calf, foot or both. So, yeah, yes, again, they are mainly seen in the night. So, you know, especially as the third as our date is nearing uh, so those calf uh, cramps really trouble a lot right so uh, the striking during the night especially in the second and third trimester now what are the causes for this so the causes for this is increase in the weight and changes in the circulation compression of the nerves right so what should be the management for these leg cramps so the management for these leg cramps is you have to extend the knee. So knee extension and ankle may dorsiflexion. So at the level of knee, you extend. At the level of ankle, you have to dorsiflex. So this definitely, this gives a lot of relief. First, uh, in I have uh, seen many patients having this relief. So you have to extend the knee. And so the management will be, you have to extend at the knee and ankle may dorsiflexion. So, knee extension and ankle dorsiflexion. Next, you have to give her adequate hydration. Calcium and magnesium supplementation. Proper footwear. Rest. So, you know, even magnesium deficiency is suggested. So, calcium and magnesium supplementation. Proper footwear. Rest with leg elevated and stay, staying active. So, these are some other suggestions which we give for the uh, leg cramps. So, if you go back, pregnant female with cramps, what is the suggestion you will give? So, it is the dorsiflexion with knee extension. So, the answer is A. So, this was one of your previous year question. So, they basically try to ask you in the what comes in the day to day, your ANCs may, what do you see? So, this is one thing, round ligament pain is the other thing which we see. And the paralytic ileus also you got questioned previously. You should be knowing about the paralytic ileus, guys. Now, uh, the next one which I felt, you know, 
maybe we you will not revise i thought i'll revise it once again for you all because this has been asked as an mcq previously so what is the modified robson's classification so modified robson classification is mainly a classification to decide whom to undergo cesarean section and whom it is not an emergency or a, a complications for cesarean section it is a categorization of cesarean section it has 10 classes it has 10 classes so group 1 indicates see this categories are mainly based on five five basic obstetric characteristics regarding the parity whether they are nulliparous or multiparous with or without previous cesarean section onset of labor whether it is spontaneous or induced gestational age whether it is preterm or term presentation of the fetus whether it is cephal breech or transverse and what is the number of fetuses whether it is single or multiple so it is mainly based on five obstetric characteristics parity onset of labor gestational age presentation of the fetus and number of fetuses okay so the modified so taking all these five into consideration we have the modified robson's criteria So in the modified Robson's criteria, nulli para first category is nulli para single term, cephalic more than thirty seven weeks spontaneous labour. So nulli para all low risk, nulli para single term, cephalic more than thirty seven weeks and spontaneous labour. So first one is nulli para. Second also is same, but so. Here it was spontaneous labor. The next one will be induced. So nulli para two is everywhere. This is this is the area. So second category is nulli para single term, cephalic, and more than thirty seven weeks. A means induced. B means cesarean section before labor. So two is nulli para single term, cephalic, more than thirty seven weeks. A is induced, B is cesarean section before labor. Three is multipara single term cephalic more than thirty seven weeks spontaneous labor. Four is also multipara single term more than thirty seven weeks. A means induced, B means cesarean section before labor. So first two numbers are nulli para, second two numbers are multi para. Next, the third category is previous cesarean. The fifth category is previous cesarean section. So previous cesarean section, single term, cephal, more than thirty seven weeks. A means spontaneous labour. B means induced labour. C means cesarean section before labour. ठीक है? So if a patient comes to you with previous cesarean Single term, cephal, and more than thirty-seven weeks. You, depending on whether it is a spontaneous, yeah, induced, yeah, cesarean, you give again A, B, C. So first was nulli para, low risk. Second was multi para. Third was previous cesarean section categories. Fourth, all nulli para breaches. Sixth one is breach. Sixth one is breach. Fifth one is previous cesarean section. One and two nulli para, three and four multi para. So all nulli paras breach, spontaneous labour, induced labour, and cesarean section before labour A B C. Okay. Main category if you remember, so next A B C is easy. Hai. A means spontaneous, B means uh, induced, C means previous cesarean section before labour. Seven is all multi paras having breaches, including the previous cesarean section. So A is spontaneous, B induced, C cesarean section before labor. Eight is all multiple pregnancies. So again, it is divided into spontaneous, induced, and cesarean section before labor. Nine all abnormal life, transverse, oblique. So it also includes the previous cesarean section, but excluding breach, because breach comes under category six, nulli para six, multi para seven, breach. So again, spontaneous labour, induced labour, cesarean section before labour. 
this was asked only once uh, as a previous year but yes let us know no then is pre term all singleton cephalic before 36 weeks before 36 weeks so again a b c a is spontaneous labor b is induced labor c is cesarean section before the labor right so this is about the robson's classification so robson's may what did we see now first category is nulliparous singleton more than 37 weeks spontaneous labor second category is nulliparous singleton cephalic more than 37 weeks again it can be induced yes cesarean section before labor third category is multiparous singleton cephalic more than 37 weeks spontaneous labor fourth category is multipara singleton cephalic and more than 37 weeks it can be induced yes cesarean section before labor fifth is previous cesarean section singleton cephal and more than 37 weeks again it is divided into spontaneous labor induced labor and cesarean section before labor sixth all nulliparous breaches seventh all multiparous breaches eighth all multiple pregnancy nine all abnormal lie except breach 10 pre uh, less than 37 weeks so 36 weeks okay so what did they ask in the question what is the category 1 nulliparous singleton induced labor nulliparous singleton spontaneous labor multiparous without previous cesarean section singleton spontaneous so this is a nulliparous singleton spontaneous yeah, spontaneous labor not induced so group 1 is nulliparous singleton in spontaneous labor so the answer comes here b so this was asked once as a previous year question that is robson's classification to categorize the women to know the mode of delivery in them so it is mainly categorized on five basic obstetric characteristics that is parity onset of labor gestational age presentation and number of fetuses i repeat 1 and 2 are nulliparous singleton cephal more than 36 37 weeks 3 and 4 are multiparous 5 previous cesarean section 6 nulliparous breach Seven, multi-parous breach. Eight is twins, multiple pregnancy. So nine is all abnormal lies. Ten is, ten is gestational age less than or equal to thirty six weeks. So these are the main categories for the Robson's classification. I just tried to make it little simple for you. So us me A B C me spontaneous A B is induced C is cesarean section just before labor. Right? Thank you guys. See you in the next video. Thank you so much.